The Note MCU ASP8266 is no doubt an amazing microcontroller board developed by the Espressive Systems. It has multiple digital and PWM pins. You can interface SPI, Serial, I2C and one wire supported devices just like the Arduino boards. If you compare the Note MCU ASP8266 with the ESP32 and Arduino, you will find that the Node MCU ASP8266 Wi-Fi module has got only one analog pin A0. While in ESP32 and Arduino boards, we have got multiple analog pins. Now you have got three options. Number one, you can use ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module, which has got multiple analog pins and you can do all the same things that you can do with the Node MCU ESP8266. Number two, you can use the ADS1015 or ADS1115 analog to digital converter to increase the number of analog pins. Number three, you can use Arduino with Node MCU ESP8266 to increase the number of analog pins, which I will not recommend, as this will increase the project overall cost and will also increase the coding. And it seems quite impractical unless you are working on a very complicated project. So my recommendation is you should use the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module. But if still you want to use the Node MCU ESP8266, then I highly recommend using the analog pins extender board like the ADS1015 or the ADS1115. The ADS1015 is a 12-bit analog to digital converter while the ADS1115 is a 16-bit analog to digital converter. It really doesn't matter whether you want to use the ADS1015 or the ADS1115. Both the modules have got the same pins and are programmed in the same exact way. So in this tutorial, you will learn how to use the ADS1015 12-bit I2C supported analog to digital converter with the Node MCU ESP8266 to increase the number of analog pins so that multiple analog sensors can be interfaced with the Node MCU ESP8266. For the demonstration purposes, I have connected three potentiometers which I am using as the sensors which of course you can replace with other analog sensors. I started with a very basic program and displayed the values of all the three potentiometers on the serial monitor. I further modified the code and this time I displayed the values of all the three analog sensors on the I2C supported or LED display module. The ADS1015 and the OLED display module both supports I2C communication, which means using only two pins D1 and D2, I can communicate with both the modules. In this tutorial, we will cover number one, ADS1015 analog to digital converter pinout and technical specifications. Number two, complete circuit diagram explanation. Number three, ADS1015 library installation, number four, program explanation, and finally, number five, testing. Without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. The ADS1013, ADS1014 and ADS1015 are precision analog to digital converters with 12 bits of resolution used for extending the analog pins. This is an I2C supported device and can be easily operated from a single power supply ranging from 2.0 volt to 5.5 volts. Due to this wide range of input voltages, the ADS1015 can be easily used with 3.3 volt and 5 volt compatible controller boards. 
the ADS1015 can perform conversions at rates up to 3,300 samples per second. It has an onboard PGA that offers input ranges from the supply to as low as plus minus 256 millivolt. This allows both the large and small signals to be measured with high resolution. The ADS1015 also features an input multiplexer that provides two differential or four single ended inputs. The ADS1015 can be operated either in continuous conversion mode or in a single shot mode that automatically powers down after a conversion and greatly reduces the current consumption during idle periods. The ADS1015 has a total of 10 headers clearly labeled as voltage, ground, SCL, SDA, address, alert, A0, A1, A2 and A3. So a total of 4 analog sensors can be connected with this analog to digital converter. For more details, read my article available on electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. Now let's take a look at the complete circuit diagram. The 5 volt regulated power supply based on the LM7805 voltage regulator is used to power up the node MCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. The output of the regulator is connected with the VN pen of the node MCU module. J1 is the input female power check and this is where we connect the voltage source. You can connect any voltage source between 7 to 25 volts. Two 470 microfarad capacitors are connected at the input and output sides of the voltage regulator. These are the decoupling capacitors. The VDD and ground pins of the ADS1015 are connected with the 3.3 volt and ground pins of the node MCU module. The SCL and SDA pins of the ADS1015 are connected with the D1 and D2 pins which are the SCL and SDA pins. These pins are also connected with the SCL and SDA pins of the OLED display module. So using only two pins D1 and D2, we can communicate with both the modules as both the modules supports I2C communication. The address pin of the ADS1015 analog to digital converter module is connected with the ground. The alert pin is not connected. The analog pins A0 to A2 are connected with the metal legs of all the three potentiometers. This is the Node MCO ESP8266 development board which I have been using for making IoT based projects. If you want to learn how to make this development board then watch my tutorial. I will provide a link in the description. I also added these female headers for connecting the OLED display module. The ADS1015 module is also provided with the male headers. I carefully completed the soldering. I started off by connecting the OLED display module and next I inserted the ADS1015 analog to digital converter into the breadboard and completed my connections as per the circuit diagram already explained. This is how everything looks after the final connections. Now we are ready for the programming. Before you start the programming you will need to install the library. Follow the same exact steps. You will also need the wire.h library which you can download from my website electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. If you are using the ADS1115 then simply 
uncomment this line of code and comment this line. But as I'm using the ADS1015 analog to digital converter, so I simply selected this line of code. The next most important thing is the gain selection. If you are dealing with 5 volt sensors, then select this gain. If you are dealing with 3.3 volt sensors, then select this one. As you can see, it's already selected. Let's say if you select the 2x gain which can handle volts between plus minus 2.048 and if you connect the sensor with 3.3 volt or 5 volt, it will damage the ADS1015. For each gain, you can see the voltage range. If you are using a sensor and you are sure its output voltage won't exceed plus minus 2.048 volt, then go ahead and activate this line of code. But in my case, I am powering up the potentiometers using 3.3 volts and I'm sure by rotating the knob of the potentiometer, the voltage can be between 0 and 3.3 volt. So for this, the best choice is the 1x gain which has the voltage range between plus minus 4.096 volt. This is a very basic program. You can read the analog sensors and then display the values on the serial monitor. I have already uploaded this program. Let's watch this basic program in action. I edit these libraries for the OLED display module, which of course you can download from our website electronicclinic.com. This is the same exact program which reads the multiple analog sensors and display the values on the serial monitor and also on the OLED display module. I have already uploaded this program. Let's watch this project in action. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.